I am thankful. 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 I'm thankful for family. 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 Friends. 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 Community. 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 Church. 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 The love that we have for each other. That I live in a republic of the United States of America. How many friends I have. There's so many loving people. The beauty of the Ozarks. The joy that my family brings to my life. I'm thankful for Cassidy. I'm thankful for Cassidy. I'm thankful for Cassidy. I am so thankful for Cassidy. For all that you do for each and every one of us. For you. I am thankful for you. Hey, welcome home to Cassidy. My name is Stephen Mitchell, and it is a great joy to be here with you to celebrate what God is continuing to do in and through us in the church, the way that God is using us to build his kingdom right here, right now, that we're not waiting for some future time when God shows up, that we're leaning into God's relationship in this moment to make a difference in this world on behalf of Jesus Christ. So if you are new here, I'm just excited that you are with us. I'm thankful that you have chosen to join us in worship today to celebrate who God is and what God is doing and, and maybe to build in and to join us in building community uh, with one another and with God so that we can be more like Jesus because we recognize that we are not perfect, but we know the one who is and we want to be like him so much and that's Jesus. So we lean into that relationship to make a difference. This is also Veterans Weekend and so I wanted to I'll also give a shout out to all of those men and women who have served our nation and, and have, uh, have put on the uniform and, and served in one of the many branches of military we have. Thank you for your service. Thank you for all you have done, whether you enjoyed it or not. Uh, thank you for your service. And it's been powerful uh, to, to see some of those posts and comments online as well. Uh, one of the things that has really changed my life uh, recently is the use of social media because we've started this brand new series called Thankful. And the idea is just to, to give thanks to people, to, to thank, and we're doing it in different areas. We started last week with thanking our families, and, and we said, hey, for the next seven days, we're going to use this uh, this. Um, hashtag that is ca thankful Cassidy UMC. Uh, and, and we're going to tag all of our social media posts that we're posting about this. Uh, and we started last week by saying, hey, these are people in our family, each and every day, people in our family that we're thankful of or things that we're thankful for. And it's, it's really brightened up my, my day. Like I'm, I'm excited to look at social media to see what people are posting, who they're thankful for and why they're thankful for it. And so I've, I've been super excited about that. And my hope is that you have joined in with us on that. If you are new, Hey, now is a great time to start. So we're excited to have you join with us uh, in sharing your thankfulness for others. And this week, we're going to be looking at what, how we can be thankful for our friends. Uh, my, my, my daughter is really good and, and always has been really good at making friends. Uh, what, what, I remember taking her to the park when she was a little kid. And she would go out to the park and run and play. And, and, and inevitably, there would be another child out at the park too. And, and they would suddenly begin running and playing together. And when it was time to go amidst the pouting and unhappiness, she would come back over and, and, and then she would say, but dad, I don't want to leave my best friend. And I was like, oh, you made a new best friend. What's, what's their name? And she would say, I don't know, because they were best friends and didn't have, to, didn't have to have a name associated with it. And so uh, she was just all about making new friends. And, and sometimes when we make friends, it can be friends that last. And sometimes it's, it's friends that really don't measure up. They, they, they won't walk with us through life. They won't support us or, or they decide to go in a different direction with their lives. And, and so when we talk about friends, when we're talking about being thankful for friends, my thought is these are true friends true friends to help us to understand how to do life, true friends who walk with us through the hard times and through the times filled with joy, true friends who listen when we're hurting, true friends who share their life with ours so that we can be made better people. And the truth is, some of the most influential people in our lives 
are our friends. And the reason is, is because they walk with us through life. And when you do life with others, it's one of those things that that you just start to rub off on one another and and the things that you care about, you share, and the things that you live for, you you share that with one another. And that helps you uh, to to be lifted up in the bad times and it carries you in the good times. And and so that's the premise of what we've been looking at, why we've been looking at giving thanks is because, quite frankly, the premise of thanksgiving is to give thanks. I know everybody gets that, uh, but I I have noticed that in my life, and my guess is in your life too, that the older I get, the more I struggle with how how it is I'm going to give thanks or what I'm truly thankful for. I know when I was a kid, I had favorites of everything. Like I had my favorite uh, color of car. I had my favorite fantasy football team. I had all of those things, but the older I get, the less favorite things I have. So when my kids are like, what is your favorite dessert? I'm like, I have so many because I enjoy many desserts and, and I don't necessarily have a favorite. And so when we get older, we, we, we have difficulty sometimes in thinking about who, what we're thankful for. What is it that has, has made a difference in our lives? Who is it that has made a difference in our lives? And, and why are we thankful for them? And so this, this season of Thanksgiving here at Cassidy, we're going to be looking at thankfulness and, and what it is, who it is, and why we are thankful for these folks. And we started, like I said, with family. And this week, we're looking at friends. And, and friends walk with us through the good times and the bad. And, and you know what's interesting is Jesus had that same experience with friends. He had friends that he developed. They were his disciples, not just the 12, but many disciples that were hanging out and following him. And, and he was their teacher. They were his disciples, but they were also his friends. And, and in the ministry that Jesus was doing, he calls them together and he's going to send them on a mission, not a secret mission, just a mission to go and, and get, get places ready for Jesus to go and teach. And so we're going to pick it up in the gospel of Luke. And Luke's gospel uh, is the gospel of uh, Actually, he takes what, what he hears from all of the, the disciples because he wasn't physically there when Jesus was alive, but compiles them into one cohesive story in, in order to share the, the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And Luke paints the story this way. After this, the Lord, Jesus, appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Basically, he's sending out the hype men, right? He's saying, hey, you guys go two by two into all of these towns where I'm about to go. Let them know that I'm going to be coming so that they can get ready and be excited for this story to be told to them, for my teaching, for the kingdom of God to draw near to them. He told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house first, say peace to this house. And if someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you for the worker deserves his wage. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you, heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. Jesus sends his disciples out to prepare the people for them. And and I love this picture because Jesus is saying, hey, don't, don't take a bunch of stuff. Just take what, what is required. Don't take extra things. Just go. And and when you get to the town, rely on their kindness to give you a place to stay, to shelter you, to feed you so that you can share the good news that I am coming to tell them about the kingdom of God. And so they do. They, they went out and, and they had heard Jesus say, heal and cast out demons in my name. And so they go and they do that. And then the 72 come back to Jesus. And, and Luke continues and says this, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons 
submitted to us in your name. They had cast out demons in the name of Jesus, and it worked. They had healed people in the name of Jesus, and it worked. And they were overwhelmed and overcome, and they were excited about the mission and the ministry. And and now they were important people. Because why? Because they had healed folks in the name of Jesus. And and so what we learn from this is, man, it is easy to be friends when things are going good. Jesus has his disciples going and doing, and, and, and the power that they experience from God is something that they have never experienced before, and they cast out demons, and they heal people, and people are paying attention, and they become important. And yes, this is exactly what it's supposed to be like. And then we have another story where Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's trying to teach them something pretty, pretty deep and profound. He's trying to teach them about the necessity uh, of, of spiritual life, that, that we have to live spiritually for God because God is spirit and truth, and, and, and the Father wants us to approach him that way. But Jesus says it in a way that they don't understand. He's telling them, hey, a time is coming when you're going to have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now we hear that and we're like, okay, that's communion, no problem. But they did not hear it that way. They didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. And they were like, wait a second, I, I'm, I'm not prepared to eat somebody's flesh and drink their blood. Actually, the commandments say don't do that. And so how could we do that? And, and still be faithful to God. And and so this caused them some confusion and some frustration. And here's how they responded. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Uh, I I love that. So Jesus isn't pulling any punches. He's telling them a deep spiritual truth. They are are upset by the teaching. And so Jesus calls them on it. Does this offend you? Are you upset by this? And then he follows it up and he says this, then what if you see the son of man, who is Jesus, ascend to where he was before? What if you see me ascend to the right hand of God? What then? Are you going to be offended by that as well? If, if I really am the one that you believe I am when you're following me, then pay attention to what I'm saying. Jesus isn't pulling any punches. He's calling them out for their disbelief. He continues, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. I'm telling you a spiritual truth. If you want to take it on face value and not try to understand what I'm saying, that's on you. But you need to, you need to realize this because if you don't, you're not going to be able to have this relationship. And, and he continues, yet there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father enables them. And here's what happened. From that time, from from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed. Jesus presents a difficult truth, a, a spiritual truth to the disciples. And when we're talking about the disciples, it's not just the 12, it's all of those that have been following Jesus, the disciples that he has grown. Now, the 12 were in a special class, right? They were the closest disciples, but there were many more, and all of them had trouble with this. And so Jesus presents this truth to them, and some of them, some of them turned away. Many of them, it says, turned away. So many that Jesus even goes to the 12 and asks. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asks the 12. You're not going to leave me as well. And you can hear in the language of, of that question, Jesus sees most of his disciples turning and leaving because of this difficult teaching. And he, he asks his closest disciples, says, hey, you're not going to leave too, are you? And then Simon Peter 
responds. And I love Simon because he's brash and he's full of zeal for Jesus. And he he responds this way. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus it, hears this from Peter, and, and you gotta, you got to think about what those words meant. In a, in a moment of purely human vulnerability, Jesus, who is going to carry out the Father's mission no matter what, turns to his closest disciples and says, hey, you guys aren't going to leave too, are you? And, and Peter responds for the group, and he says, No, you are the one that we know has the words of life. You are the Messiah that was to come. You're the Holy One of God. And think about what those words meant to Jesus. Think about what those words meant in in his ministry in that moment, in the vulnerability he has, in the emotional upset he has that people are leaving, yet the ones that were true to him for the most part, stayed and and embraced the teachings that he gave. And and, and that that moment, their presence, their commitment to him allowed him to carry on, gave him strength to carry on. And I'm sure we have all experienced something like this because the truth is this, Jesus' friends helped to give him strength in the tough times, just like our friends helped to give us strength in the tough times, just like our friends walk through the darkness with us, just like our friends encourage us and lift us up, just like our friends speak life into our lives and help us to know what's going on and which way is up and how we can move forward, even in the brokenness. These words of encouragement that Jesus received are similar to the same words of encouragement that we have received from our friends in life, in those difficult times. And my guess is that you've experienced that firsthand. You've experienced love and compassion. Sometimes you've just experienced them being present with you, sharing that moment with you, hearing the heartache or heartbreak, maybe just sitting and being present with you in a time of loss and heartache. And so these are the same things that Jesus experienced. And and when we lean into the relationship that we have with Jesus, one of the things we start to recognize is he has called us to be friends that that are worthy of of having people be thankful for. Uh, He has called us to be friends that are pursuing him so that we can be better people, so that we can be better friends. And so we have, we have these two challenges that I'm going to issue us today. Uh, and one of them, again, is that social media piece. Uh, and, and here's what we're going to be looking at this week uh, for our online post. So we're doing three different things to, to encompass everybody, actually four, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about it in just a second. So one is in the online space, whatever your social media or social presence is, is in, uh, post every day for the next seven days a friend who you are thankful for. It's, this is our online challenge this week. Post every day for the next seven days a friend who you are thankful for. And, and my hope is that, that you will uh, flood the internet once again with people you are thankful for and maybe why they matter to you. This past week, again, the family stuff was, was very overwhelming to me. I, I was moved by, by some of the reasons why we are thankful. And so let's, let's keep that up and, and tell people why we are thankful for our friends. But if if you don't have a social media profile, if you're not online in that way, hey, we've got cards out here. If you don't have a card, uh, if you don't ha- live in this area, you can go to any card store and buy some card stock and just send a letter to somebody and let them know, uh, one of your friends, why you are thankful for them. Oh, or call, you know, pick up that phone. Everybody's got one. Call somebody and, and let them know how thankful you are for them. Even better, 
Go and tell them face to face. Invite them out to lunch. Share with them why you are so excited that they are your friend or what they have done, where, something, uh, where, where they have done something in life to, to help you to get through life, where they have come close to you and, and been uh, somebody that has helped you to move through life and to be encouraged and to celebrate life. And then the second part of our challenge this week is this. Be a friend someone would be thankful for. Be a friend someone would be thankful for. Just like Simon Peter encouraged Jesus, be a friend that somebody it recognizes encouragement from, somebody hears that they matter from. Be a friend where they hear life and encouragement and hope, and they live better because of your friendship. Now, this isn't something you can force. This is something that you offer and sometimes people say no, sometimes it frustrates you, but love them where they are and, and make a difference in their lives. Be that kind of a friend, not a fair weather friend that departs in, in, the, in, in any hint of brokenness in their lives, but instead make a difference. Become someone they cherish and trust. Become someone they hope to run into and have a conversation with. Become someone they are thankful for. Because we have the best of all friends. All of this stems from Jesus' desire to be close to us. Jesus desires us to be his friends. And when we are friends with Jesus, we are friends of God himself. And, and we know this to be true because Jesus tells us. In John's gospel, he makes it clear. He says it this way. I no longer call you servants. He's talking to the 12, but he is also talking to us because he reveals the same thing. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. I no longer call you servants. Instead, I call you friends because you know what I want from you. You know what I expect from you. You know what I have called you into, and you know what to do, because I have made everything known to you, Jesus tells his disciples, and Jesus tells us who are his disciples as well. And so the challenge we have before us is how do we live into that? How do we truly embrace what God is calling us to? How do we lean into the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and, and be the friend that Jesus wants us to be, offering, uh, offering our lives in, on his behalf so that we can be the friends that people in this world need us to be, so that we can share life with others, so that we can encourage, so that we can lift up, so that we can be friends that people are thankful for, and then let us also give thanks for our friends, those men and women, those folks that have walked through life with us, that have made such a profound impact on our lives, that our lives are better because of it. Maybe our lives are better because we have seen Jesus in what they have done in and through us. So let us be more like Jesus. Let us love more like Jesus. And let us live more like Jesus. Now, and forever. Amen? Let's pray. Holy One, we give you thanks and praise for the gift we have in Jesus Christ, for the love that you offer us, for the fact that you call us friends. Father, we just pray that you would pour your Holy Spirit out upon us. By your presence, we would be made more and more into the image of Christ, that by your love and grace, we would be able to love well those people that you put in our paths. Help us to be the friends that they need by loving them well, by sharing your grace, hope, and peace with them. Help us to embrace who you are and to share that and reflect that with everyone. We give you thanks, Lord, for our friends for those people that have done life with us and that have helped carry us through the brokenness. Help us to embrace them, to share our lives with them. Help us to give thanks for them. And we thank you for the gift you give us in this moment of your presence, that by your presence we are made more and more in your image and we are sent 
to do your will. Help us to do that now. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.